the uh, hour of 7 o'clock having arrived, I'll call the council to order. Let the roll reflect that uh, all council members are present with the exception of Council Member Balsanic and Alanji. A quorum has been established and uh, we have determined a quorum. We have, first of all tonight I want to make a special uh, announcement and they're right in front of me. Uh, last week was the League of Minnesota Cities Conference. I think Council Member uh, Vaughn was there in attendance and myself and uh, some staff, Melanie was there. Uh, we also had a luncheon that recognized the City of Hastings for s some awards. And uh, Council Member uh, Brock, or no, Council Member Schultz was there and Alanji was there at the luncheon. And uh, first of all, the City of Hastings received the award of City of Excellence. Uh, for a city of 20,000 or more, which is a lot of cities in Minnesota when you really think about it. And we received the award uh, in relation to our uh, Hastings Riverfront Renaissance. And uh, I'd like to thank staff who uh, put it together, particularly Lee and uh, Melanie and Julie, everybody who was involved in that. It was a great uh, presentation. And uh, so we had the opportunity to represent the citizens of Hastings at the beginning of the or at the luncheon and go up on stage and recognize that uh, we won this very prestigious award. So that's this one right here. Uh, the one on my right and to your viewers left is uh, the Green Steps Award, therefore the green and the steps. And this is for uh, being environmentally conscious. We have uh, involved in a program uh, with the state of Minnesota and uh, through the league uh, to be more environmentally friendly, to uh, have environmentally sustainable, sustainable projects and, and buildings and promote that uh, environmental sustainability throughout the community. And there are a series of steps that we need to get to and the highest is four. So you can see that we're at up to step two, we're halfway there, we're gonna be working on step three in the next year. And uh, so the city of Hastings was uh, recognized for its efforts uh, in that regard. So I just wanna put those there so let everybody uh, uh, get a chance to see them. Yeah. Councilmember Schultz. Thank you. I just wanted to make one comment, if that's okay. Um, on the green steps, I think it was a couple years ago. Um, I don't remember. It was when we were in St. Cloud, I think. Um, I saw a presentation, and then last year in Duluth, when um, Paul Douglas was there talking about the whole climate change issue and weather, um, and I kind of got it really piqued my interest on the green steps, and I was I bugged Melanie about it. Um, for a couple years, I think, um, about getting going. And um, also, um, we've had some constituent um, uh, responses to it and, and calls for action in terms of green steps. So I'm really happy that we've got, we're halfway there. I think it won't take us that long. I know it, it takes some effort by staff for us to get, to get where we need to go, and I really appreciate that they're willing to do the work. And um, this is a good thing for our city to be involved in, and I think our residents are gonna be very happy. Thank you. I should have mentioned that, uh, Councilmember Schultz. You've been early on this process. You've been a leader uh, in this effort for better environmental sustainability. So we appreciate your efforts there, and we're getting there, aren't we? And all city staff who is working, and Sarah uh, from our staff is uh, is our coordinator on this pro project, and she's doing an outstanding job staying on top of that. So, kudos, everyone. Next, I would like to uh, recognize our uh, uh, our Hedra staff, our uh, Community Development Director John Hinsman and Mike Kelly, welcome to the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. It's uh, an honor for me to be here tonight, uh, albeit I, I wish I wasn't here to send this guy off here. But Michael Kelly has been with HEDRA, the Hastings Economic Development and Redevelopment Authority, for the last five years. And during that time, seen tremendous changes throughout the city. The Hudson Project in particular is one which HEDRA has spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and it's going to be paying off great dividends here over the next year or so. Not only with the Hudson Project, but with some of the other things that Hedra does, assisting businesses, providing loans, and making sure that we're in the right direction on economic development for the city. The volunteers that we have, the commissioners that serve us, take time out of their busy schedules, times away from their family, to help serve and make Hastings a better place. And so we're always appreciative of the efforts of those individuals. We're sad to see him leave. We're happy that he's gonna be going on and enjoying life. And uh, wanted to have this opportunity tonight to thank Mike for his service. So, Mike, thank you very much. We've put together a, just a little certificate here recognizing your service. And 
wish you the best in the future. Thank you so much. Thanks, say a few words. Mike, if you can, please say a few words. I know you're a man of many words. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm known for. Um, <laughs> when I saw this um, for five years, and I couldn't believe that it was five years ago, when I accepted the appointment to Hedra five years ago, um, I was really excited, really um, enthused about uh, getting involved in the city of Hastings, a city that I um, has become my, my home, uh, my new hometown. Um, and I intended to stay here for the long haul. Um, but, you know, as, as things happen, um, I had, was, was presented with an unexpected opportunity and uh, uh, am going to be relocating my family to Mankato as soon as we get our youngest. So I actually, I guess I'm just reloading, relocating my wife. But as soon as I, we get our youngest off to college in Colorado, my wife and I are going to uh, sell the house and pack up and, and uh, move south. Um, I feel like I should be giving Hedra a certificate of appreciation because it's truly um, you know, my appreciation to be involved. Um, I, I feel like I got so much more out of the experience than I was able to give to the, to uh, give back to the city. Um, there's, there's a pretty s um, steep learning curve, and every month I would come to the meetings and just be in awe at uh, uh, how versed Commissioner Kina, the, uh, the other commissioner who's leaving, Commissioner Toppin, um, Piney Holzem. Um, I'm sure I'm missing somebody. I know um, council, council uh, person. Schultz and uh, Alanji always shared their wisdom and their, their leadership. And, and I just got to say, I've, I've worked in government, state and local government, for nearly 28 years. The staff that work with Hedra, John, uh, the other staff are as competent and as dedicated as, any, as I've ever worked with. So it's, they made the job coming every month a, a, an easy one. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. I think you're very reflective of. Uh one thing that we have in this great city is great volunteers who step up and participate in their government and activities around the community. And uh, I think you're a great example of that, and we really appreciate all that you've done on Hedra and the time, the commitment, and your talent. So thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You. And Mr. Mayor, I do have one more recognition to before us tonight. Kurt Kina, who has also been a long-term member of Hedra, and before that, the HRA was unable to join us tonight. But Kurt has been serving in that capacity for 14 years, a tremendous amount of time that has gone through. And you, you take a look at the changes that have occurred during that time period, from where we were with the riverfront before the Renaissance, with the old bridge, with development proposals we were trying to sort through. And his guidance and his expertise was, was, was extremely valuable in that process. So I want to be sure that we do recognize Kurt as well. Thank you. Thank you. And pass along our congratulations. Right. Thanks. Okay. Uh, council, uh, is there any uh, approval of the minutes? So the, we had the special city council meeting on May 31st in regards to the budget, and then approve, uh, we have the regular city council meeting uh, minutes from June 6, uh, 2016. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes of those two meetings? Seeing none, they stand approved. Council items to be considered. Any additional council items to be considered? Seeing none, we'll go to consent agenda. Councilmember Nelson. Thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, like to request that number four on the consent agenda be moved to administration. Okay. Councilmember Nelson will have that number uh, two. Number two. Okay, under administration. All right. And is there a motion to approve with that amendment? Councilmember, a motion to approve with that amendment. Okay, and second by Councilmember Schultz. Okay, the motion is before the body to approve the consent agenda with the exception of number four placed under administration. That motion is now before the body. Is there any discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. Aye, those opposed nay, the motion prevails. Next we'll go to administration and the first item is the approval of the 2015 comprehensive annual financial report Rebecca very glad to have you here at the meeting this evening and please introduce your guest and our, our next subject all right uh, good evening mr. mayor council members uh, the city recently concluded the audit of our 2015 financial statements um, and I have Chris Knopik um, the principal on our audit this year here from our audit firm Clifton Larson Allen this is the fifth year that they completed our audit 
Um, so I'll let Chris introduce us. Okay. Welcome to the meeting. Glad to have you here. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and the rest of the council for allowing me to come to the meeting tonight. Uh, we met in a work session before this, so um, we went through uh, the audit in more detail at that point in time, but I still wanted to come before the council and give the full council a, a brief report of how the audit went this year, hit some key financial highlights and everything. So as you can see, there is a PowerPoint on the screen behind you. You should also have a paper copy in front of you, so feel free to look at whatever's the easiest for you. So, as far as just a real brief agenda, I'll go through who our audit team was this year. We'll go through the auditor's report. So, uh, some brief slides on the financial reports and then just some other items at the end just to bring everything back together. As far as the audit team goes this year, it was myself, John Lorenzini, Lucas Chase, who are the, the three that have been working with the city now for the, the longest period of time. We've been with, uh, I think, four years now, four of the five years we've all been here in some capacity. And then Casey, Troy, and Lance were brought in new this year kind of as a, a new site, which is always good to have some rotation on the audit team. They always bring in some new insight and... Uh, knowledge to the audit process. As far as the actual audit results go, the city received an unmodified or a clean opinion this year, which is the best that the city can do. We did not have any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies this year, which is great. It's good to see that the controls the city has in place are operating effectively. We did have one legal compliance item that we did note this year as part of the audit. There's a statute requires a declaration on the back of the city's check, uh, check stock. For whatever reason, this year when the city changed check, checking accounts with, to merchants, they're on the Hedra account. The declaration was included. The city's was omitted for some reason. It's been corrected already, so nothing going forward there, but we did have to point that out. In this year, as far as the financial statements, if you look at this year's financial statement, try to compare it to last year if you're into that kind of information, you will see there are some new standards that we implemented this year. It's Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement number 68 and 71. Those are the standards that require the city to record the city's proportionate share of any pension liabilities or assets that the city is, is, part, is partaking in. For that, the city would be the, the Public Employees Retirement Association, but then also the Fire Relief Association. They have a net pension asset. The Public Employees piece is a net pension liability. That resulted in a restatement to your beginning fund balances of about $6.1 million this year. So a pretty significant dollar for the, or number for the city. Um, it's nothing unusual. All cities across Minnesota and across the country are having to deal with these new standards coming in. Um, the, the pension plans for the state of Minnesota are pretty well funded for the most part when you compare to other states across the country. Um, you're, the state's right around 80% funded. That's still, when you look at that 20% funding gap, that's still a $5.5 billion number when you look at the plan as a whole. So still looking at very large dollars. Uh, and you can see it's about a $6 million liability for, this, for the city here. So just to make you aware of that, uh, the, the pension plan itself does have a funding plan in progress to try to fund that liability fully. No tell if any of us will actually be around when that full funding happens, but they do have a plan in place to, to gradually fund that. So. As far as just a few graphs that go over the financial results for the city, this first one is looking at just the specific general fund for the city, so the main operating fund, looking at your revenues transfers in and then expenditures and transfers out. The revenues and your transfers in are on the left side of the, each of the yearly graph, graph lines there, and then your expenditures and transfers out on the other side. The, the thing to note here is that this year your transfers in and revenues did exceed your expenditures and transfers out, which is always a, a positive thing. You added a little bit to your fund balance at the end of the year. And the nice thing to note about that is when you look at your overall fund balance policy that the city has adopted, that policy says the city should try to maintain somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of your next year's expenditures in fund balance. And the city this year was basically right at that threshold. It was at 39.7 percent. So you're right in line with where your policy is, which is, which is great financial management. You're making sure you have enough reserves there to keep operating if something was to ever happen. It gives you a little bit of a cushion there. And then this last one, just a few other items just to make note. Uh, the city did receive the Certificate for, of uh, Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for 2014. It's the 18th consecutive year the city did receive that. And the, the city has plans to apply for that certificate again this year. It involves the, the city's financial statements being sent off to independent reviewers. 
they take a look at it, compare it, make sure you're presenting everything properly in accordance with all of the standards that are out there that the city has to abide by. So it's a quite lengthy process. And then the last two bullet points are here just to let the, the city council know that there are some new standards that are going to be coming out over the next few years. The most significant ones here, which would be Statement 72 for this next year's audit. And really what that is, is it's uh, going to be adding some note disclosures around investments and defining fair value. Uh, the, the nice thing there with the restrictions that the state of Minnesota puts on municipalities, there's not going to be any significant changes in how anything is valued. It's more or less going to be adding some note disclosures again. The other big one is going to be coming out in 2017 and 18 for the city, which is post-employment benefits again. The, the GASB board took a look at the standard that was currently on the books, decided it needed to be rewritten again. Um, the nice thing to note there is that when the, when the city first adopted the post-employment standard back, um, it's been, what, four, five years ago now, somewhere right in there, the city decided to fully implement that standard. Um, a lot of cities back then, the standard allowed uh, up to a 30-year amortization period to slowly get that liability in the in the financial statements the city back then decided to record 100% of the liability at that point in time and then the new standards are also going to requ require a certain type of actuarial cost method to be used so all plans are valued exactly the same the city is already using that valuation or that method already too so you shouldn't see any real significant change there other than it's going to add some very significant note disclosures again the, the new pension standards probably added uh, around 10 pages worth of note disclosures. When post-employment, when those new standards come out, you're probably going to be adding another four or five pages again there. So that tends to be the theme lately with the, with the GASB board is they like to be adding pages to your financial statements to try to, in their idea, make things more clear. But I'll leave that up to you to decide if they're really making these more clear or not. So. <laughs> Um, but outside of that, I just want to open it up for questions. I want to thank uh, Rebecca, her team. Melanie, Julie, everybody at the city has been great to work with again this year. Um, we pushed the audit out a little bit this year just to make everybody's schedules work. Rebecca still did a great job making sure that when we came into the, uh, to start the audit, everything was in very good order. Um, I wish all of my cities would be as prepared as Rebecca is. It would make my job a heck of a lot easier, that is for sure. So I'd like to just thank everybody for that. So well, thank so you. That, if there's any questions or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you, Chris, for that fine presentation. Appreciate that. And Rebecca, thank you for all your hard work. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, Council, let's open up any questions or comments. Any questions or comments about the report? Council Member Schultz, Chair of the Finance Committee. Um, I, I don't have a question. Um, Chris does a very, very good job, and Rebecca, they do a very good job of um, explaining this book with a lot of numbers and charts in it. Um, <laughs> And you guys, it is really fabulous bedtime reading if you want to go to sleep. I'm sorry I have to say that to people who use numbers for a living. but um, I don't blame you. I'm the same way. If you ever have trouble struggling, just pull out a few financial statements and start reading. <laughs> there you go. Um, I just think it's, it's, it's fabulous um, that for the 18th year in a row, we've, we've been given this award for our, um, for our audit, which is, is a testament to our staff and our city council and um, our residents for being able to have such a solid community. And also the two things that are really important is we've got two policies. We have, we have our, um, our debt policy and then we have our, um, our general fund policy. And we are, are doing really, really well in terms of, of uh, the, debt, the debt policy. We could, um, it can't exceed 35% of our um, total budget expenditures and we're at 21.36 with our bonded debt. So that's, that's really good news in terms of how we're structuring our um how we do our debt and how we're how how we're moving our city forward in in that aspect and then um on our unassigned fund balance at that 40 percent there was a period of time i believe um maybe even five or six years ago where that was really struggling we were below that 30 um just because of the nature of the economy and how things were um things were working in the city at the time and well frankly across the country across the world um, but we have really come come back from that and bounced back and the staff has done a good job there's a piece in here um, and you know Chris I'm gonna I'm gonna lose where I found it no I no. here it is um, our actual revenues were hundred and fifty eight uh, five hundred and fifty six thousand dollars higher than the amended revenue and a, a large part of it is because of our property tax revenue which were almost twenty five thousand over budget primarily due to significant delinquent collections so the city has done a good job in, in gathering delinquent collections, which are helping us 
with our total um, with our total budget and um, keeping us where we need to be and getting a, um, a clean audit from our auditors so thank you staff and thank you Chris for doing such a good job thank you is there any additional comments or questions okay, seeing that Chris thank you for that fine presentation appreciate your hard work and uh, we'll see you sometime in the future sounds good thank you very much thank you okay council uh, next oh, first of all to before we move on we do need to approve this uh, uh, acceptance of the 2015 comprehensive annual financial report so I'll accept a motion Co councilmember Schultz makes a motion to adopt second by councilmember Brox that motion is before the body is there any discussion to that motion seeing none all those in favor of that motion say aye aye those opposed nay the motion prevails uh, next we have an item that was brought before us uh, from the consent agenda uh, the denial of requests uh, for Ms. Stoffel for the waiver of late fee assessed to her utility bill Councilmember Nelson thank you your honor I appreciate that um, I'm going to quickly summarize this for Ms. Stoffel um, Ms. Stoffel had sent in her uh, water bill payment um, it never arrived here at the City Hall office um, so she was sent another notification um, which she paid the original amount but not the penalty um, she believed that her her mail was stolen out of her mailbox so she went through the work of closing down her account um, just so you know her information wasn't um, being used anywhere else um, however our city policy only allows for Ms. Stoffel to have a waiver of late penalty if she's uh, willing to sign up for the auto pay program uh, which she was not willing to do uh, she just doesn't want to sign up for the direct withdrawal of the money coming out of her account then uh, so the only other option is to come before council and ask for forgiveness of the waiver or excuse me forgave forgiveness of the late fee uh, which she did by contacting me a couple of times that I spoke to her um, her and I spoke directly and I, I talked with Melanie a little bit more too um, in regards to the options that Ms. Stoffel has and you know, I explained those again to her and, and staff did a fine job in explaining this to her as well but uh, Ms. Stoffel was very adamant that you know she did put in her post or her mailbox um, and that her mail was stolen of course um, there's no way to prove that um, because on, there's no police report that says mail was stolen um, but the fact that she went through and got her account closed in my opinion is, is typically good enough for me to uh, to recommend waiving a penalty um, so what I would like to do your honor is I would like to um, request um, to make a motion that we um, go against staff recommendation and I would like to have uh, Ms. Stoffel's $13.29 penalty waived so I'd like to make that motion your honor okay councilmember Nelson makes that motion to uh, waive the penalty is there a second to that motion Second by Councilmember Schultz. So the motion is before the body. Uh, discussion to the motion. Councilmember Vaughn. Thank you, Your Honor. I, 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 Councilmember Nelson, I'm assuming we're just going on um, trust here that we close the checking account. Do, you, do we know the applicant? Do we know that we close the checking account? Or is it just according to her notes here that she closed the checking account? Um, she was willing to provide that information if necessary. Oh, she was. Okay. I, I don't know if she brought that tonight or not. So she, yeah, she does. That's all I needed. Thank you. Okay. I, I, here's here's my point on this. I I know I have every reason to believe that uh, you sent that and it just didn't get through for whatever reason that is. But this is not new ground. This is not unprecedented. We've had before the city council before. Uh, uh, request for a waiver because somebody put their payment in the mail and for whatever reason um, it did not uh, get received here at City Hall if we would make an exception tonight it'd be the first exception we've done under this scenario uh, since I've been on the council uh, and I would have a hard time to tell the previous people that we denied under the same circumstances why we would accept this particular case and not anybody else previous to this point uh, this is something that happens probably once every I don't know two three four years um, and the City Council's of policy has denied it in fact the the fact that there's a auto pay came as a result of one of something that's very similar to this situation um, and so we we were searching out a way that we could have a relief 
uh, for an individual who uh, sent it in the mail and it got lost and we thought well you know what can we do that 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 would help um, waive that fee and we and we came up with the idea of joining the auto pay uh, uh, it's a course of doing business uh, on behalf of the city you know it's always a hard thing because I, I certainly believe the applicant you know she certainly put her bill in the mail and it got lost and right I read that in the And I read that uh, in your letter and, uh, and read that as part of your statement. So, but at the same time, I could also, uh, Council, recall the exact same thing happened to another person. Two or three times I could recall that they put it in the mailbox and they sent it in. And uh, I don't have no reason to believe that they didn't do that either. But the Council policy was to deny uh, uh, unless the waiver, you know, unless the Circumstances the auto pay was was followed through. So, uh, as much as that hurts, I know it's uh, only thirteen dollars. I know it's a principle of the thing, uh, Ms. Stoffel, for you, and I understand that. Uh, also, there's principles involved that uh, there's been previous applicants before the council who have made similar requests, and they've all been denied, uh, uh, based on the fact that uh, you know we have to uh, have a policy that's uh, fair to everybody, and uh, and I and I. And that, and that's, uh, that's where I'm coming from. That's where I, I just wanted to make that statement. Councilmember Nelson. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm glad you brought that policy up. I, I see that it was passed in 2008 uh, when we went with the auto, uh, the auto payment policy to waive the penalty. In my opinion, times have changed a lot. I, I think there's a lot more mail theft than there is or than there was in 2008. So eight years ago, I don't think there was as much, you know, potential mail theft. I can't say for certain that this was stolen out of our mailbox or if it was just lost or, or whatever it was. You know, it's hard to substantiate the facts there. But I think there's just so much more mail theft now that maybe we need to take a look at, you know, allowing staff. And, and Ms. Staffel, I don't want to say that staff was uncooperative. We don't allow them to decide to waive your penalty. We say that they have to follow this policy and that's what they were filing. You didn't want to sign up for the direct payment they couldn't do anything else that's why you're here tonight before us so that you know that's being cooperative um, but I think maybe we need to take a look at that part and, and determine if there is maybe another way for us to allow staff to um, maybe either allow them to um, make a decision on for a one-time waiver or maybe it's just the fact that when people come before council and they have their facts in order like Ms. Stoffel does where she closed down her old checking account opened a new checking account and can prove that um, that we would allow for the waiving of the penalty thank you okay, thank you um, I would just say in relation to that uh, since with this policy has been implemented in 2008 we've hardly ever had one of these requests before us because I think most people have chosen to go to the auto pay so this is the first time that I've had a denial request like this in a while and I think that's it's reflective of of the new of the policy that was adopted in 08 so that would be just my my observation Councilmember Vaughn I'm just looking for some history on this policy if the, if they do sign up for this auto pay we waive the fee correct but what's stopping them from the month later saying I don't want the auto pay anymore I'm gonna start writing a check do we do we have any regulations once you sign up you have to be with it for eternity or for a year well, well, not not quite eternity, um, council member, but it is six Who's months. Who's tracking it? <laughs> it's, it's a six month uh, requirement, and then you can opt out at that point. So okay. I think essentially two billing cycles. Two billing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there uh, any further discussion? We do have a motion before the body. The Nelson motion. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the Nelson motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Uh, the motion, the Nelson motion does prevail. Okay. And uh, next, um, I want to make a declaration that the city council uh, is going to go into closed door session for the purposes of labor negotiations. Uh, so we'll be uh, going into to, uh, closed-door session for that purpose. Um, 
And once the discussion of the labor negotiations uh, conclude or the closed door meeting concludes, then we will um, reopen this door. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I will have before us announcements, Council. Uh, and uh, first of all, is there any comments from the audience? Okay, no comments. Okay, Council announcements? Is there any announcements? Okay, I just have a few announcements. First of all, on Tuesday, June 21st, the Heritage Preservation Commission will be meeting at 7 p.m. at City Hall. Um, the Music in the Park, well, down at the, well, there's our award right there, part of that deal. Music, uh, music in the Park, down at the Veterans Memorial Levy at the Pavilion. It's tomorrow night. It's the Gypsy Mania Hot Club Quartet Swing Jazz from, they're, they're fabulous. Well, they're, we got it right from the critic's mouth. Uh, that's good. Uh, they're going to be there at, between the hours of 7 and 9 tomorrow night down by the river. So if anybody has the opportunity to swing down there tomorrow, please be there. It should be fun. On Thursday, June 23rd, the Red Rock Quarter Commission has been canceled. So Council Member Vaughn, that opened up your schedule. Um, on Friday, June 24th, very important, this Friday, the absentee voting for the primary starts. Is there a ballot on the primary this year? Not on a local ballot, but there are others. Okay. So there will be, uh, on Friday, June 24th, absentee voting for the primary starts. And voting will be open uh, during regular city hall office hours from 9 to 4.30. Um, again, at the Veterans Memorial uh, Levy Park and at the Rotary Pavilion, there's a class, Art in the Park Flags, at 6 p.m. at Levy Park, and that's also this Friday. And then the, at the Aquatic Center, we have a lot of activities going on here in our great city. Uh, flick and float at the Hastings Family Aquatic Center. Bring a tube of floaty and watch the original Jaws on our outdoor movie screen at the Aquatic Center. More information is available on our website under events. On Saturday, this Saturday, June 25th, we'll have our car show. So we'll look forward to that. The first one was very successful. So we'll have our second one coming up. On Monday, June 27th, at 7 p.m., the Hastings Planning Commission will be meeting. Uh, back at the Rotary Pavilion at Veterans Memorial Park, there's fitness in the park from 5.30 to 6.15. Um, and YMCA class type, and it's, it's abbreviated. It comes out to RIP. But I'm not going to try to figure all that out. RIP. Well, it's R-I-P-P-E-D, ripped. All right. Okay. I might not be able to make that one. On uh, Thursday, June 30th, the Public Safety Advisory Commission will be meeting at 6 o'clock at City Hall. And, of course, just a reminder, everyone have a happy and safe 4th of July. Uh, the city offices will be closed on Monday, July 4th for the national holiday. And we'll have our next meeting then at 7 p.m. here at City Hall on Tuesday, July 5th at 7 p.m. again. Uh, Council, that concludes our uh, uh, announcements. Uh, we will, I will accept the motion. Uh, to go into closed door session and, and end this public portion of the meeting. Councilmember Brox makes that motion, seconded by Councilmember Vaughn. Uh, discussion of that motion, seeing none. All those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails, and we will go into closed door session for the purpose of discussing labor negotiations. Thank you.